So Andy's looking to do it yet again, and I'm going to explain how. But before I get to that, we have next-gen APUs with one nice surprise, and AMD just confirmed that they're crushing it. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today's video is sponsored by Ugreen. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, some slides have apparently leaked from an LG Gram X Ryzen launch event. And from those slides, we've learned about a couple of AMD's next-gen APUs. Specifically, we've learned that AMD is apparently planning to launch two different series of APUs at the same time. One is called Gorgon Point, and the other is Medusa. And while Medusa is the more exciting one, let's quickly go over Gorgon Point. As you can see right here, it's essentially a refresh Strix Point. We're talking maximum core count of 12 cores, then we're talking Zen 5 for the CPU architecture, and RDNA 3.5 for the GPU architecture. And of course, I already sort of went over the fact that next gen should be coming with RDNA 3.5, but like I said, essentially, this is a refresh Strix point. In fact, one of the biggest things that they offer is up to 55 plus tops. So really not much of an increase. To further kind of go over each individual SKU, you can see that, well, once again, we're talking up to 16 CUs, so 12 cores, 16 CUs, like I said, very much a refresh, 55 plus tops in only a couple models, and then you'll notice really the biggest thing other than the AI tops is slightly higher clocks. So once again, not all that exciting, but what is exciting is Medusa. Now, believe it or not, it's not the specs, it's not really any of that because we don't really have any of that information. But as you can see here, it says, the higher end series codenamed Medusa appears to be part of the Ryzen AI Max series. Remember that that's the APUs with those monster integrated GPUs up to 40 CUs. What the really exciting part about this is, at least to me, is well, for one, if you remember, the original Ryzen AI Max series was codenamed Strix Halo. So Strix, just like Strix Point, the regular APUs, they just kind of added Halo saying, hey, this is our Strix Point, but it's our Halo version of that. While now, it actually has a codename of its own, which really tells me that clearly AMD thinks that their Ryzen AI Max series is here to stay, or they may rename it, I don't know, but regardless, those type of APUs are here to stay. Oh, and really quickly, I meant to show you this as well, to show just how much Gorgon points really isn't much of a boost over current gen Ryzen AI, given the fact that all these slides are correct. This is of course a leak, so you don't want to take this with a bit of grain of salt, but yeah, you can see we're talking just a slight upgrade over current gen Ryzen AI. Next up, I've got something really awesome to show you. This is the brand new Ugreen and Genshin Impact series of chargers and power banks, specifically the limited edition five-star character Kenich themed design adventure kit. So everything is themed around the character Kenich, like how the power bank has this awesome ahow boot animation. And speaking of the power bank, this 20,000 milliamp hour power bank is an ultra portable yet powerful bank that can output 100 watts of power to a single port and up to 130 watts from two two outputs, which means you can charge laptops, Steam Decks, tablets, and more. They also have this awesome 65 watt wall charger to fast charge up to three devices at once. And finally, they have this Qi 2 15 watt fast charger for your iPhone, headphones, and more. And as you can see, they all look seriously amazing. I've been getting into the game recently myself, so I'm loving these. And today, Ugreen is offering my viewers up to 30% off when you visit my link in in the description below. Plus, you can enter another new giveaway. Once again, check those out in the description. And next up for today, it's official. AMD is crushing it, but it's even more wild than what we originally thought. As you can see right here, there was a recent interview with AMD's own CEO, Lisa Su, with the ASUS China manager on Billy Billy. And what she had to say was pretty wild. As you can see right here, it says, quote, I'm very proud of the team on RDNA 4. When we design a new architecture, we plan its core features years in advance. 
for RDNA 4, our goal was to deliver top-tier gaming performance at an accessible price, allowing more gamers to experience this technology. The 9070 XT has been a fantastic success. Here it is. It's the number one selling AMD Radeon GPU in its first week. So the number one selling Radeon GPU in its first week sounds like basically ever. She then goes on to state with sales 10 times higher than past generations. Now, when she says past generations, I'm not sure if she means all past generations, but she did at least say past generations plural, meaning this isn't just a comparison like some people seem to be thinking versus the 7900 XT and 7900 XT X, which of course would be somewhat understandable, you know, not 10 times more, but we are talking more of a mid-range GPU versus a high-end GPU, so it's kind of understandable, especially because it's so much cheaper, things like that, but we're talking multiple generations. And of course, though, you do have to also look at the fact that, okay, yes, NVIDIA has obviously been sold out quite a bit, but they've sold out before in past generations. And none of that accounts for 10 times higher. Basically, AMD is completely crushing it. Now, with that said, I really do want to point out to AMD, and I do believe based on what they're talking about here, that it they do know this, but I do want to reiterate that you are crushing it because the 9070 series has great price to performance. This doesn't mean everyone just loves AMD now and they can up the price or anything like that. No, you're doing so well because of this great price to performance. So just definitely keep that in mind now and in the future. Now, while talking about AMD's awesome price to performance, the company is gearing up to release new RX 9000 GPUs. And I'm gonna go over exactly how they were able to get prices so low and how they can do it again. So starting things off, AMD's RX 9060 XT is coming and coming fast. As you can see right down here, ASUS has added multiple new models for certification with the South Korean government's database. So first up, we have this GPU, well, multiple ones here, we're talking Prime and Dual, and as you can see, they are eight gigabytes, at least these, because luckily they do also offer 16 gigabyte models, and of course we'd sort of heard about this before, but I would argue that this more or less confirms it. So yes, AMD is planning to release both an eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte model for their RX 9060 XT, similar to NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 5000 cards. But one thing I do want to discuss is the fact that AMD will almost certainly crush it yet again. We're talking amazing price to performance with their 9060 XT cards as well, even with the fact that they do offer eight gigabytes and I definitely think they need to very quickly move away from that. It would have been great if, even if it was just 12 gigabytes, but they should be able to crush it and that's because of one key thing. If you remember just right here, it said for RDNA 4, this is specifically from AMD, for RDNA 4, our goal was to deliver top tier gaming performance at an accessible price. Now, obviously you hear stuff like this from corporations all the time. You know, it's just corporate speak. Yeah, we're just trying to deliver the greatest price with the great, but this very much looks to be the case with RDNA 4. Because if you remember when it was originally announced, one of their biggest goals was performance per compute unit, where you can see that it got a massive boost in performance per compute unit with RDNA 4 versus RDNA 3. And to show you exactly what I mean, let's take a look at the RX 9070 XT. As you can see here, officially the specs, it comes with just 64 compute units. Compare that to the 7900 XT, not even the XTX, and don't forget that the uh, 9070 XT definitely crushes the 7900 XT, yet it's comes with a whopping 84 compute units. That's over a 30% increase, yet the 9070 XT, once again, completely crushes it. So why exactly is that important? And what does it have to do with 
price to performance. Well, one very key thing is very important when it comes to pricing of chips, and that is specifically how much silicon you use, meaning just how big is the chip? Obviously, there are other things, but when looking at the same node and stuff like that, one of the absolute biggest driving factors in terms of price per unit is going to be the size that that particular GPU or whatever it is that they're making takes. And because AMD was able to seriously up the performance per CU, they were able to drastically lower how big the GPU itself actually is. As you can see right down here, so this is the 9070 XT and it comes in with a die size of just 357 millimeters squared. For comparison, once again, in the 7900 XT, which it absolutely crushes, you can see that it is a whopping 529 millimeters squared, meaning the reason AMD was able to drop the price was not just because, oh, they're just trying to outcompete NVIDIA. This was clearly made to be a price to performance behemoth which also means that their lower end GPUs, which are also obviously gonna be based on RDNA 4, will come with this same exact much smaller size to the performance ratio. So AMD should absolutely be able to do it again and again and again with RDNA 4. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Andy's RX 9060 XT? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Ugreen's awesome Genshin Impact set down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.